Hello again, and welcome to Africa. I mean Canada. It's like 95 degrees today, and yesterday, and tomorrow. And that's without the humidity. It's brutal. I'm not built for this. <laughs> Anyways, I'm hiding in the garage. And um, first, before I get into the video, I want to explain uh, my last video. I was having a problem with the spark gap. This is the um, schematic I've been going off of. This is JL not in. And uh, you see that the capacitor, he has the spark gap, which is right here, coming off the negative side of the uh, capacitor. Now basically, I've come to realize that, well, this is basically uh, a Tesla circuit, right? And um, on a Tesla circuit, Tesla always has the spark gap coming off the positive side of the cap and I mean I already knew this but I guess I was kind of in uh, um, like cruise control just following the schematic you know what I mean didn't realize and then ran into that problem but um, just an interesting thing there that uh, he uh, I guess inadvertently made it this way or maybe that's the way it goes I don't know but I'm um, getting a really juicy spark. I'm coming off the positive side of the cap now and going, <clears throat> well, right now for this video, I have it going into my coil, coming out, and then this is coming out of the coil. It goes down and it's just laying on the ground. And you see that it's just laying there. And <laughs> you'll see some cool stuff in a second. Um, and then I have my core. Now I changed my core. Originally I had this, uh, this is a piece of 7 8 inch copper pipe that I flattened out and drilled some holes in it and um, I was told a uh, Russian guy commented, a Russian person commented on one of my videos told me uh, that Kepin adds an uh, SR193 I guess is someone who replicated this, um, used uh, uh, an iron core, a uh, ferromagnetic core so I tried that and I got a little different results <coughs> already so I'm keeping it that's my uh, pry bar basically my crowbar <laughs> it was a uh, nice heavy iron also I want to note that uh, my wire coming out from the uh, coil comes over here to uh, my negative side of the cap and this bolt right here that comes through the wood also goes through this copper pipe now I might switch that to a metal plate like uh, not in uh, did, but um, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to lay this on the ground outside, basically, and uh, I'm going to pull this ground wire through the window outside, and I'm going to hook it up to this uh, bolt, basically, right here, uh, like the schematic, or maybe I'll end up on this side of the uh, diode, I don't know. But um, that ground will go there, and then uh, this spool here is going to be my other ground. It goes to my my core. But uh, right now, I have this ground hooked up to this ground wire, and this output from the coil is just laying on the ground. And I wanted to show you the uh, the spark first of all. First of all there's fuzz everywhere around this thing when I turn it on and um, I'm gonna need to spread it out and uh, rearrange how things are packaged but <clears throat> anyways um, it's really fuzzy <laughs> I'm gonna turn it on I'm gonna get a really good spark here and uh, well first I'm gonna show you straight off the side of the capacitor so turn it on you can see it spark in there and spark I'm going to grab the wire and be careful because it's very fuzzy everywhere. Really good white bolt. Now I'm going to get it situated here at a point, there's a, a distance or a certain disruptiveness in the spark. There it is right there. I'm going to follow this wire down, which in the meantime has become attractive to the workbench and it's coming down here and now 
And I thought that was really encouraging because uh, that's pretty intense down there. And uh, but my next step is going to be to uh, take this outside and uh, hook her up to two grounds that are 10 meters apart. Uh, because like uh, the Guru to you commented and pointed out to me that the um, uh, the two separate grounds that distance are going to be act as a capacitor and uh, um, give maybe the extra charge to the circuit for lighting the um, lamps. Anyways, I wanted to share that with you right now while I figured it out or, or stumbled upon to it. But I think once I get this ground wound right out and into the earth 10 meters apart from the other one, I think I'm going to see even more coming off down here or obviously I'm going to have this hooked up to the ground but <clears throat> I think that um, it's going to be cool. Also I'd like to point out that I'm using a flyback out of an old color TV with this simple flyback driver circuit and um, I'm doing it that way because uh, in C Kapanadze's original videos he has uh, his unit in a plexiglass box and uh, pretty sure I could see the uh, underneath the soldering of uh, a flyback transformer but also he starts the pulse with that unit with a 9 volt battery and then it sustains itself and um, I think that he's not pulsing a microwave transformer with a little 9 volt battery he's pulsing something like this to get it going and obviously in order to get it to run itself if this ends up uh, making some extra wattage um, I'm gonna have to you know finagle another little circuit in there but um, that'll be no problem but anyways wanted to share that with you and uh, again feel free to comment I want to thank everybody who uh, helped me out there with my little spark gap problem but um, and thanks for all the help and input uh, always appreciated here anyways I'll let you go and uh, I'm going to try not to melt the rest of the day but I'm going to uh, I'll drag this out in the yard and give her a whirl and there will be another video either way talk to you later